Hello everyone and welcome to the NRG Stadium located in Houston, Texas, the home of the 51st Super Bowl. I think you just gotta stay consistent in your faith like anything in life, you gotta be persistent, you know. Um, don't just call on them when you need them. Thank him when he does good for you also. Is there that key person in your life that really kind of helped keep you grounded in your love for God? Uh, I mean, grandma always- Praying grandmama, grandma, huh? You know, grandma's don't preach that word. I got a scripture I could do all things through Christ, and uh, I mean, that's the reason I can say I'm here, man. She always believed in that. You love the Lord with all your heart, right? Yes, sir. Okay, and I love the Lord. So now, if I hooked up over the middle, and the ball was coming to me, mm -hmm. You'd be nice to me, wouldn't you? I would run through you as hard as I could and then shake your hand after the game. <laughs> well, the awesome thing is we have a group of core believers that really honestly play for something much higher than winning football games or, or winning championships. I came uh, to Christ about uh, four years ago. I was fully baptized, but it's been a long process. Son, this program could not be complete without taking a little bit of a time out. A little out. bit of football. Talking about football. And who can talk it, who can break it down better than the professor? Compare the two quarterbacks for us. Well, you've got a, an elite quarterback uh, in Matt Ryan since 2008. Came into the league, took the team to the playoffs, had a nice five-year run. And you're talking about the greatest quarterback in the history of the league in Tom Brady. I agree. So, I mean, it's like, I, I didn't make that transition until the last Super Bowl win when they beat Seattle, but that's when I made it. You win four Super Bowl rings, you go to six. I mean, you're in a, you know, at every championship game, what, 11 out of 16 championship games in a conference. How do you do better than that? It's gonna be a three-point game, but I put my money really? on Brady. Oh, yeah. Congratulations on a great season. Can you explain the madness? Oh, it's been a blast. Glad to be out here. What a blessing and an opportunity to be here. What is maybe the thing here that you've enjoyed the most? I enjoyed the most just hanging out with my friends and family and like just seeing everybody out here and be out here with this brotherhood. Houston's a big place. Let's talk about something else big in your life and that is your faith in God and your walk with God and uh, tell me about how that happened, what, how it means to you. Absolutely. I mean, I was uh, born in a Christian family. My dad was a pastor, so I was blessed and lucky enough to come up with that upbringing and knowing Jesus from a very early age. Awesome. When in your life did that moment like everybody else that you need you need to make that decision for yourself to follow Christ and how did that happen absolutely I mean it my, my entire life I, I knew him but there's a certain moments where you just feel his presence and you really lean on him even more I mean I had certain things happen to me like I remember in one preseason game I got injured and it was like a pretty intense injury in my very first or second play and I had to really lean on God that entire game and it was preseason game four, so I was, that was the game. It was like make it or break it for me. So it was one of those moments where, you know, in my weakness, God was able to show his strength, and it was awesome. To set here, because a lot of people play in this game. I played for 10 years in the league myself, but they play in this game. It doesn't work out for them. And, man, all the energy is gone, and what am I going to do now? But uh, you don't have that thought simply because you understand there's a bigger game, and that, of course, is the game of life. Absolutely. I mean, God has a plan for me, a plan to prosper me. I mean, I've been cut from teams before, and you think, like, oh, my world's been crushed. Like, that was my opportunity, and it's not all about that. I mean, no matter what I'm going to do, I'm going to work as hard as I can, and, and then, then that diligence, I'm going to worship God in that manner. Now, tell me, your, uh, tell me your determination, what it took for you to get here. Air Force, uh, played for Air Force and that determination no matter what anybody says I'm gonna make it to the NFL absolutely I mean it was a tough route for me I went to the Air Force Academy so I had a commitment to the Air Force so my first two years I had to serve simultaneously as training to try out for a team so I took my leave in order to attend training camp and like I was working my tail off in order to make it and even then I had to decide whether I wanted to give up a career to be a pilot which is an incredible career that I worked my tail off to get to or give that up and actually pursue an NFL career, which my chances were very small, especially not being able to play as much as everyone else and like being in that, that serving asset. How do you keep your faith going in the midst of this very tough season where it's very demanding? I think when it is a tough season, that's whenever you gotta rely on your faith the most. 
I think that's when God's there for you the most. And that's that's been the biggest thing for me is like in my toughest moments, that's when I really leaned on him and felt his presence and gotten me through those moments. You're a big believer in tithing. Tell me your testimony there. Well, for, for me, I always struggled with tithing. It was one of those things where it was like, I always forgot my wallet or just made up an excuse or just somehow and like a week after week it would kind of build up and I hadn't tithed in a long time. So uh, last year I just, you know, you know what, I'm going to tithe my entire year salary in one thing and just give it all. And it was, it was terrifying handing over that check. I was like, oh my God, it's a big check. And then a, a couple days after I did, they called me into the office of the GM and they said, uh, gave me a brand new contract, quadrupled my salary for no reason. I mean, I was blown away. I mean. Talk about when God just uh, you didn't know it was coming. Oh, no, no clue. There's no reason to. I mean, nobody got hurt. Nobody anything changed. Like, it just quadrupled my salary. And it's like, you just talk about God, like opening the floodgates of heaven and on me. Like, He says, testament that. And <laughs> so your gift had no strings attached to it. Right. And because of that, God honors. Absolutely. And it was it was unbelievable to see that. I mean. For a, for a lot of guys, you kind of see like when you're coming to get a new contract, but mine was middle of the season, no reason. It was just, it was, it was God. Okay, last question. You're standing in front of hundreds of youth, you know, and they're cheering and yelling, seeing this big man walk in, and you have the right to tell them about Christ, making the right decision. So in your words, what would you tell them? Because you will have, this is worldwide, you'll have a huge audience. And so a closing word, what would you say? I'd say God loves you. It doesn't matter where you are at in your life, what you've done in your past. He forgives you, welcomes you, and he loves to have you. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, I've made a ton of mistakes in my life and I continue to make mistakes. But no matter what I do, he's there for me. And it's rare to have that. And everyone wants that. And he'll fill that hole that you're missing. There's that deep down, there's a hole that you're wanting to fill. And the only thing that can fill it is God came from an incredible family, incredible mom and dad, and that's everything, of course. But yet there comes that point in time when you have to make that decision to follow the Lord yourself. Yeah, and I, um, you know, I actually have a really cool story about that. Uh, my dad and my family actually own a little bit of property out here in Houston. And um, in uh, the fourth grade, I was actually sitting with my dad in the living room and uh, you know, just kind of talking about that stuff, and that, and it was that night that I, I decided to, you know, put my faith in Jesus Christ and make Him my Lord and Savior, and um, you know, it, it, it's such an awesome and humbling feeling to be, you know, loved by the Creator of this universe and know that He's on my side, no matter if I'm a good football player or, or if I have success or not. As long as I do it, you know, with all my heart and um, do it for His honor and His glory, I can't go wrong. God could care less about who wins the game, but he cares about the person in the game. And so knowing that your foundation is not the sport, it's your walk with God means what to you? Yeah, I, I, I remind myself of that all the time. Uh, you know, as great as it is to be a you know, great football player and, and to get recognition, um, this stuff, that, that stuff's all fleeting. It's not going to last. Um, the only thing that is eternal is, you know, Christ Jesus. And um, reminding myself that all the time is something I think that keeps me balanced and humble and hungry. And um, you know, I think just accepting that it, it's not something that shows how perfect I am or how I have it figured out. I, it, it's it shows how imperfect I am and how how badly I need a savior and how badly I need. Um, you know, someone to save me, like I said. So, uh, very, very honored and very humbled and proud to, you know, be a follower of Christ. Is there a few steps in your life that you you do to remind you to stay focused, to stay on track? Yeah, you know, I, I try to stay in my Bible. I, I keep a pretty good game plan for that. Um, before every game, uh, I pray, you know, Lord, I, I don't know how it's going to turn out, but I just pray that I can, you know, just do my best and honor and glorify your name. And, um, you know, all the good stuff or the bad stuff that comes my way, I, I just want to give it to you. I just want to give you all of me. And, and, and that's something I'm constantly reminding my, myself of. And, um, you know, it, it keeps me balanced. You're very humble about that. and. I know your dad pretty good. I had the privilege here, here a couple of years ago, of sitting down with uh, some of your siblings, and I had a blast just sitting at the table. It was at a golf tournament, and just watching your younger sibling, and and uh, 
with mom and dad there, and we talk a lot about your dad. 19 years, as good as any offensive line, but ever played in the game, and even a better man off the field. But your mom, special lady. No question. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm one of seven kids, so, and like you said, my dad played 19 years, so she, she was in charge of us for the most part, and uh, I couldn't ask for a more loving and, and nurturing and caring uh, mother. I, I love her to death, and uh, she's also one of the big reasons behind our faith as a family and uh, the trust we have in the Lord. And, um, you know, I, I, I can't say enough how proud and humbled and blessed I feel to to have parents like that and, and who led me the right way and uh, instilled, you know, great values in me, and um, I love them to death for it. A lot of young people today are hurting watching this. This will be worldwide. Uh, if you had that opportunity, if, if you could, in the spirit, see thousands of young people that need direction in life, in closing, what would a man in your position say to them? You know, I think I think we all are searching for something. There, there's an, you know, if you try to go through this life on your on your own. Uh, there's a feeling of lost, and um, we, we all just, we want to be loved, and we're we're looking for something. And um, you know, the only thing in this life that's ever brought me true peace and joy is uh, the love of Jesus Christ. And um, you know, I, I, I try, you know, I've tried I've, multiple times. You know, you think you got it figured out, and I, I always fall back on it. I, you know, I think oh, I, I can do it on my own, and you know, that's my pride trying to tell me that you know I got it figured out, but. It's, it's, it's just so obvious to me that what the answer is. And, um, you know, the more I study it and the more I look into it, the, the clearer it becomes. So uh, I, I just feel very, very, very humbled and blessed to be in this opportunity and, and to be able to speak, about, speak out about stuff like this. What was that moment that really God became real to you? And then how do you apply that to your life? Well, I would say um, I grew up in the church, always grew up in the church. My mom, she's a reverend. Uh, she's a choir director. I play the organ for the church when I go home. And I say all the, a little bit, you know, but I say the moment where it really became real to me was my senior year in high school. I was taking my, my girlfriend at the time back to college and uh, I got in a car accident, like literally lost control of my dad's truck, got hit by 18 wheeler, like cars totaled. I'm literally sitting there, my girlfriend at the time, who's my wife now, she um, literally like 30 seconds before, she um, had her seatbelt off, looking in the back seat, like and she literally just put her seatbelt on. So literally that moment, just being able to walk out of that with no scratches, being able to play a football game the next week, my, my girlfriend at the time being safe, it just let me know that God got me, no matter the situation. Like, it's just the car is total, hit by 18-wheeler. I walk out with just no scratches, no 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 breaks, no, nothing. Like wow. just walked out just free, and I just knew at that moment like this. He's real. He's real. He he got me no matter what. From that moment, what are you're like? Okay, man, this, this mm -hmm. Jesus dude, he's real. Mm -hmm. What what are some values that you've incorporated into your life? Mm -hmm. Talk about your marriage, yeah, yeah, like yeah. like to keep you grounded. I say the the first thing is that. He is everything. He is he's the first. Like before anything else, I gotta always put him first. He he has to be the main source. He has to be my everything before anything else. I can't put football before him. I can't put my family before him. I can't put anything before him. He has to be the main thing. And then after that, it's just all about treating in my eyes, all about treating people how you want it to be treated. I feel like if you love God. And then you treat people how you want it to be treated. Everything yeah. will usually take care of itself. Come on, man. I love to tell people, Jesus didn't die on the cross to be a part of your top three, right? <laughs> Died to be number, number one, one in your life. Ain't that right? That's right? Talk about your marriage. What do you and your wife do? You a father? Oh, yes. Well, come on, too. man. What, what, are, what are some things that you guys do to stay grounded? Because we all know, man, mm -hmm. I mean, marriage ain't easy. Definitely. It's the first thing God created and the mm -hmm. first thing the devil attacked, man. Yeah, it ain't easy. It, the Bible even calls it a mystery, right, in Ephesians 5. Definitely. Man, what are some things that you and your wife do to stay grounded 
spiritually as a couple and then as a family? I say the one thing that we actually started doing, uh, my sister and my brother-in-law, they actually put us on, was uh, going through reading scriptures together with each other each and every night that works on uh, just a marriage, like finding different uh, scriptures. Uh, we were actually, uh, wow, we were in Ephesians. Uh, last week uh, talking about that and then uh, for my son and uh, we pray every night before he goes to bed uh, we say our, our grace we make sure we say our grace before he eats and before he goes to school he says his prayers and he's five and it's, it's so funny because he's doing the prayer by himself now and it just makes me it makes me smile it makes me happy because like, it shows that I'm actually trying to, you know, doing the right thing and trying to push them in the right direction. That's what I'm talking about. There's a lot of people here watching today, man. And they're hearing you talk about this, Jesus. You can see it all over you, man. Your testimony, your walk. If they're asking, man, why should I follow this same man that you're talking about? Answer this one question for me. You know, why Jesus? Preach to him, man. Because uh, you can't do it alone. No matter what you want to do in this life, you just can't do it alone. You will always fall short when you're trying to do something by yourself because life is just, it's too hard. We deal with too many obstacles, too much stuff that's just going to just down us and it put us in a place where we just want to quit. But with God, I'm trying to tell you, you could be in that, that spot by yourself in that dark hole and he's the only person that can literally lift you up out of there. And there's been times where he had to lift me out and it's gonna be times where he's gonna continue to have to lift me out. But I know with him, I can do anything. Come on, I need that B3 right now. <laughs> <laughs> and man, hey, thank go. you so much for your time, man. Congratulations to you. And thank you for your walk and what you do. I appreciate it, man. Everything I do, I'm doing it for an audience of one. And um, I know that I'm blessed to have the opportunity that I have and I feel like I'm in debt and I have to maximize that opportunity. And obviously, as I work and prepare and play football, you know, I'm always gonna go out there and give it everything I have. But I think on the back end, uh, when you get off the football field, the relationships that you build with people, uh, especially in the locker room with the guys that you're with, in the community and in your home, that's very important. So uh, I try to carry that mindset with me whether I'm, you know, working out on the field or working at home, you know, I'm doing everything for an audience of one. But there's that moment that you have to stand up for yourself. Can you tell me about that moment and when it happened and what it means to you today? Well, the initial moment uh, that you're referring to happened when I was seven years old. Uh, my dad and I sitting in my bedroom and him, as he did many nights, uh, reading the Word of God to me. And I remember him asking me, you know, what I thought about Jesus. And, you know, at seven years old, it's kind of hard for you to fully grasp salvation and, and who the person of Christ is. But I think I had, at that time, a, a limited understanding that was enough for me to say, you know, this is something that I want to build my life around. And then I say another turning point moment for me came during my college years. You know, growing up in Southern California, uh, I went to a Christian school, was, lived in a Christian home, went to a great church there, Calvary Church in Santa Ana. But when I got to college, I had to really personalize my faith. And, you know, there were some tough decisions that needed to be made. And I remember during my freshman year of college coming home, uh, you know, I had made all the right ones. And, and my dad really challenged me to say, hey, man, this is the time for you to become a man and you say you want to be this kind of man and you've professed that, uh, well, it's time to start acting upon it. So I think there was that time, my freshman year in college, where I really had to trigger my faith. And, uh, you know, it's been, you know, something that has continued to develop and will continue to develop all Absolutely. the way until I, you know, go to, go to meet my maker. With the viewing audience, can you walk us real quick through the plan, what does salvation mean? And, and how does a person become born again well certainly well I think number one you have to understand who God is and who his son is and you have to understand what God says about your sin and from there you realize that hey you know I am a sinful person and my sin has separated me from uh, an eternal perfect God and but there's a backup plan to that he sent his son Jesus and I believe that uh, Jesus is is the son of God is God he came here he died on the cross for my sins, your sins, everybody's sins, everybody who's willing to accept that truth. And if you're able to put your trust in him 
and, and confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is who he says he is, then from there you can initiate a relationship with him. But I also believe that repentance is a big part of that as well. Um, you have to turn from your old life of sin and try to, you know, model uh, a Christ-like life. And I think that that's something that we'll never fully figure out on this side of glory, but uh, it's certainly one day at a time process that I've been so blessed to be on uh, for the last 25 or so years.